and welcome back everybody for part two of Cranky's Farm, the main battle. So it's 11.30am and the Union Division is actually starting to move across the field with haste. As you can see here in the center, the Union are pressing hard on um, Cranky's Farm and the East and West Ford have almost been taken, the West Ford has already been taken. You can see there the Union troops streaming towards the cornfield and you've got uh, Union Cavalry also completely flanking the Confederates and heading towards the um, west of Cranky's Farm. You can see it there heading across a, what seems to be an empty cornfield. Um, lots of Union forces piling forward and not many Confederates. There's one small Confederate brigade here which has managed to turn its flank and trying to hold back the Union and try and give itself a little bit of time for reinforcements to come up. Um, but it's not looking great for the Confederates as you can clearly see. Um, going along the back of the map there you can see that the East Ford is uh, under pressure but the Confederates are holding it. So that's the situation at 11.30am but at least Gary, one of the Confederate commanders, has finally got some troops. Finally got some troops there Gary. Finally got some troops. I got some tops. Just at the last minute. Just when it's all over. Just in the time would be great. What are they? Oh, they're big guns. Big big is happy, don't you look? What are they? Oh, they're big guns. Now, if you haven't seen the first part of Cranky's Farm, to be fair to Gary, he has spent the entire day of the Saturday eight full hours without any forces at all except one solitary figure. So I think he's entitled to enjoy himself. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's just Napoleon's uh, maybe well, busted up. Well, he's turned up to say hello. Hello there, boy. It was looking a bit bad to be fair now. It just looks a little bit better, but it still looks really bad to be fair. Can I, can I now say, you no. slagging me off for, for trying to... Yeah. Yeah? He was the one. Okay. <laughs> Here we go, oh. the, counter, the counter thrust, look, he, it was him all the time. Look, I gave my orders, and you know what he's like, he just disobeyed. Listen, yeah. what you want to do, right, have him shot. I rolled to put it in here, and so I put it down there, and I said, we'll put two blanks over there. But he put a blank here, and he didn't tell me. Uh, so, don't so I, on me, I thought I was moving the unit. No, you didn't. Okay. You went. So you I'm going to move the blank. And you moved in. Yes, but I thought it was a unit. No, you told me. Who's in charge? Yeah, no, me. He doesn't listen. Right. No. no. I think I'm going to port martial you. No, no, no. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, that's it. 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 And then they go, Billy, we need someone to I'll be here. Bye. They just stood up. They march through. March through the pool. But we'll grab a minimum of 10 inches now that you have to put stuff on. Like <laughs> so they just pop up. Oh, I'll ask Tim, has he got any lead troops? <laughs> They'll tell you when, you when they fire, man. You may well have the Texas with Dave, did it? <laughs> so using our in-house rules a very civil war the confederates have managed to roll an entire confederate division unfortunately for them it's come on in exactly the web gary is now in this tiny small cornfield and this has got a historical precedence for instance at the battle of seven pines huger and uh, longstreet both sort of fought over a road uh, Longstreet was kind of in the wrong, he pushed Huger out of the way and they both arrived at the same kind of place and that really had repercussions for that battle. Um, in this instance uh, the, the Union believe it's a brigade or a couple of weak brigades and the Confederates know it's the division but trying to get that division into play in such a small area proves very difficult and that's the idea of our games. It's about making it a bit more historical. It's looking good now, it's, looking good now. it's going to be a tough old fight now. Be. Whereas we like to say he's going to be pitching a hissy fit that crank his forward to the oh, well. well everyone said that Gary was a bit of a wanker, <laughs> but some of us realised that in well, it was, was true. Wanker, <laughs> some of them too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <some> <laughs> of them, yeah. Gary was a wanker, some of them too. Sarah, Sarah. If ever you hear the girl is a it's true. So <laughs> <and> blue. <laughs> so with this division coming on, the entire battle suddenly changed. 
Gary was chuffed and he finally had a unit to be able to start fighting with. Look his little face, he's actually happy. What's Joe's unit doing? He's actually smiling. <laughs> well, thank you, Lord, for the coffee. <laughs> he's smiling. <laughs> Well, thank you, Lord, for the coffee. <laughs> so around 1 p.m. in the afternoon, the two Confederate brigades have deployed in the cornfield with a third in reserve, which is off table. And there's also a battery of 12-pounder cannon, which is pounding Frank's brigade of Union soldiers and the cavalry, which were trying to take the cornfield before this uh, Confederate reinforcements turned up. The Georgians are still holding there to the right of Cranky's farm, and now they're much strengthened by the men in the cornfield. Uh, Cranky's farm is being held on, the, on this side of the river and to the left of Cranky's farm there is a weak confederate brigade holding the ford against a fresh union brigade which is attempting to assault it. Uh, at this stage they're not having much luck. Some sharpshooters are moving up to support the confederates. On the extreme right flank of the union there's a battery of guns and a small weak union brigade which is pinned in the corner. It arrived in this corner and is completely isolated. It has no idea what's going on in the rest of the field and is just trying to hold its ground. And you can see the men there amongst the trees looking uphill at a much larger, stronger Confederate brigade with cavalry support behind. And the Confederates are actually just holding the high ground and firing down through the trees into the Union. Can the Union hold on? Who knows? They're hoping that more reinforcements will come and turn this side of the battle, but at the moment it's not looking good for that Union Brigade. If it wasn't for this battery of guns, then the uh, Union would surely be swept away and the Confederates would own this side of the table. If we look towards the pen, you'll see that Fitzhugh Lee has deployed his cavalry in there, the Elite Cavalry Brigade, and they're actually dismounting at the moment and lining the fences. So they looks like the Confederates are in a very good position on their left, which is the Union Extreme Right. And then as we come along the uh, Union lines, you'll see that the Union are moving through the fields towards the Ford. That's where they're trying to attack across the Ford there. They've got a nice fresh brigade and a battery of guns pounding away across the uh, right hand side of Cranky's farm. Some zwarves there taking the buildings, sharpshooters firing and another battery of guns on the left hand side but it's run out of ammunition at a critical time so it's quite weak. And Frank was setting himself up to launch an attack into the cornfield. So Frank needs to decide very quickly what to do with this brigade. Does he continue the attack against overwhelming odds or does he fall back? Meanwhile, the cavalry have managed to completely secure uh, the Union's left flank and they're actually pushing through the trees and the hill there. The skirmishers dismounted and they're sniping into the uh, Confederates um, and the Confederates' right flank. And the Confederates are just hanging on and starting to line the fences, but they've got a really powerful force in this cornfield and it's all in the balance whether the Union are going to be able to continue to fight or whether they're going to have to fall back on this flank. So to give you an idea what that looks like, this is the Union cavalry uh, coming on here and threatening the cornfield on Cranky's Farm cornfield there. This is a Union brigade, a strong brigade, a veteran brigade which was about to steam through that cornfield before the Confederates turned up heading that direction. Uh, you know, the Union were obviously hoping to cripple the, the left, the right flank of the uh, Confederates. Then you have two more brigades here, another small brigade here threatening the Ford, and the isolated brigade on the extreme right there. There's also a small weak brigade in the Wendell Farm field. Now the Confederates have two brigades here, a reserve brigade here, uh, one here, the Georgians holding Cranky's farm, the small brigade holding the Ford, and obviously Fitzhugh's Lee's cavalry. Uh, in the pen and a large confederate brigade uh, threatening and penning in this um, this union uh, in the corner um, so that's the state of play and the confederates are about to counter attack from the cornfield towards this single union brigade and towards the small cavalry unit um, using the whole division in the cornfield um, and in the corner they're trying to wipe out this isolated brigade as well so that's the state of play at 1 p.m. Um, on the uh, main day of the battle. The battle continued to and fro until around about 5pm when the Confederate General realised he had a serious decision to make. 
The Union cavalry was still pressing hard on his right flank and they were deploying more and more men into the cornfield, dismounted, which were pouring in a withering fire into his troops, which were still stuck in the cornfield trying to sort out their formations in such a small area. The Union had also committed a brigade over the road towards the cornfield and this was stuck out by itself in a very dangerous position and was such a tempting target. The Union Brigade on the right flank that was uh, cut off and defending itself was, was only really being saved by one battery of artillery and he realised if he could launch an attack he could crush all these troops. So he launched a general attack. The rebel yell went up and the men rushed forward from all corners of the battlefield. The men streamed across the cornfield towards the brigade which was stuck out by itself and also attacked the cavalry uh, while the cavalry was still in formation. Uh, the Union Brigade that was trapped on the Union right flank, the small one, being defended by the Battery of Artillery uh, with Fitz Hugh Lee and the big large Confederate Brigade suddenly was assaulted and even though the Battery tried its best to hold on it, it came under such withering fire from the Confederates that it started to be depleted until eventually the Battery was destroyed. This left the Union Brigade uh, almost undefended and it was short work for the large Confederate Brigade to, to simply just attack it, whittle it down and eventually destroy it and force it from the field of battle, thus securing the Union's right flank. So for those of you who like the details, at 5pm the Union were pushing into the cornfield using the cavalry. Uh, the rest of their division, or Frank's division, ran along the road and one brigade was right out in front of the West Ford. Uh, the, the rest of his division ran along uh, Wendell's farm and out to Wendell's cornfield where it left the table. Um, on the extreme right was a weak Union brigade with a battery of guns holding that corner. The Confederates, uh, the Confederate division ran along the line I'm showing you now, right the way along Cranky's farm to the East Ford and then back along the river which was kind of impassable. Uh, Fitzhugh Lee's Confederate Cavalry Brigade was holding the pen and in front of him and in front of the weak Union Brigade was a strong Confederate Brigade pressing hard. So the Confederates decided to attack from Cranky's cornfield into the Union Cavalry and also do a pincer movement on the exposed Union Brigade. Um, and then Fitzhugh Lee attacked the uh, guns and he was supported by a large confederate brigade which was going to push and eliminate the uh, Union right flank uh, in that corner right there. By 8pm the light was dying. The confederates had managed to push the Union cavalry away from their right flank and had captured a small hillock but a battery of Union guns was pouring a deadly fire into them. The rest of the Confederates in the cornfield had repeatedly attacked the Union and although weakened and badly shot up, the Union was still managing to hold the fence. The Confederate casualties were shocking. Men fell in their dozens and hundreds. Units were reduced to two stands or maybe one stand in places, but yet they kept pushing on and yet the Union kept holding the fence line. In one place the Confederates had broken through next to the Ford supported by a battery of guns, but it was in vain. The casualties the Confederates lost in their charges from the cornfield could not be sustained. Uh, Cranky's farm was still held, um, the Union could not cross the bridge, so Cranky's farm itself in the middle was a bit of a stalemate. However, the Ford or the East Ford at Cranky's Farm had been crossed by the Union and the Confederates had had to turn their left flank at Cranky's Farm and fire sideways or enfilade the Union as they crossed over the Ford. This Ford crossing was to prove the end of the Confederates at Cranky's Farm because what it did was effectively split the uh, Confederate Army in two. The shattered brigade that was holding the Ford was starting to leave, reduced to just a few stands. On the extreme left of Confederate flank and the Union right, the Confederates had captured the hill driving off the small brigade but were being held in check by the late arrival of another Union brigade led by Hancock um, and Samuel Zook and Thomas Meager. Their part of their division had actually turned up. 
um, and they were actually holding the Confederates uh, to check, while the men poured across the ford, splitting the Confederate army in two. With that ford crossing, really, the Confederates, having lost so many casualties, had no option but to start to withdraw. And as the dying light of the uh, Battle of Cranky's Farm started to turn into nightfall, the Confederates slowly slipped away from Cranky's Farm, reformed and got ready to fight another day. The Union losses were quite hard, quite severe. The Confederate losses were very severe. But at the end of the day, the, the Union just managed to hold the Confederates back. And uh, the battle was very, very close indeed. So, and it was a most enjoyable game. This is the final battle positions for those that are interested in this sort of thing. As you can see there, the Union breaking through across the East Ford. If you enjoyed the battle, please leave some comments. There will be many more battles to come. And uh, like I say, if you like it, please subscribe and uh, leave some comments in the video and what you think. These rules will be available soon for free. We will release them online. They're called A Very Civil War. They're just the uh, rules that make the game a little bit more realistic. And also we've adapted Pickett's Charge rules to make those a little bit more um, enjoyable as well. Okay, I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time. <laughs>